What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here. Today I am back with another Destiny 2 video and today I bring you more information on the season of the Drifter which drops next week. As last night I brought you basically a recap of the Vidoc they dropped explaining a lot of what we will get with the Joker's World DLC but the Twab last night covered much more information on this next DLC for Destiny 2 which we want to dive deep into today guys and to be honest last night I wasn't too optimistic about the DLC I mean some parts of it looked promising but I was still underwhelmed a little with what they seem to offer but after reading the twab I mean like my hopes are high now they really are but before we get into that guys if you do enjoy the video and would like to show your support you can by hitting that like button if you are new around here and enjoy daily Destiny 2 videos be sure to subscribe okay so yesterday we got the Vida which explained uh, a lot of what we will get with the Joker's World with the Gambit Prime ga new game mode, with the Reckoning new game mode, uh, a few other things, two new exotic quests, uh, so many other things to be honest. If you missed that video, you'll find it linked within the video description. It covered basically what you needed to know about the Viduck. I mean, the Viduck, if you ain't seen also, you'll find that linked within the video description. But I'm pretty sure going through this tab today, we'll go through everything that Viduck offered. So, yes, let's get into it, people. So, firstly, within the tab, what I want to cover, they showcase this new roadmap, which you guys can see on screen now, which actually shows us what we will be getting. Uh, over the next month or so. Now we see March 5th we get Gambit Prime and the Reckoning Tier 1. March 5th is when the Joker's World will drop which is next Tuesday. With Gambit Prime we get a new Gambit Map 2 called Ar New Arcadia. We also get Gambit Private Matches. On March 8th we get the Reckoning Tier 2. This is that other game mode which looks like some weird push forward horde mode but to me looks absolutely amazing and I love this sort of thing. The only problem I have with it though is within the V-Duck it seems as though it's tied to Gambit so you have to go back and forth between Gambit Prime and the Reckoning. I mean I ain't a massive Gambit fan. I mean Gambit Prime could change my mind on that. I love the fact that it's only one round based as well and you unlock perks which make it progress over time. That sounds cool. Hopefully as we get into this tribe today they explain a little more about the actual loop you have to take between these two modes. So we will see. Gambit Prime uh, Deep Six is a new map which will come on March 12th. Also on March 12th we will get a new quest for the Fawn called the Allegiance Quest. March 15th we get Invitation of the Nine and Reckoning Tier 3. I wonder what this is. I mean within the Viduck we did see the Nine talking to Judge Drifter. Seems like they're cooking something up. So we will see about that. March 19th we'll get Gambit Prime Legions Foley. Not sure what this is. March 26th, we'll get Gambit Prime Emerald Coast. I'm guessing these are just maps, to be honest. They look like maps. On April 2nd, we'll get Gambit Prime, all maps available, private matches, Gambit Prime, New Arcadia, and Deep Six. I'm guessing that we're all coming to one. That's what's going to happen there. So progress towards April 2nd. Each week, we'll get a new map. But on April 2nd, we'll get it all at the same time. And April 9th, we'll get Art Week, free to all players. No idea what that is. And April 16th to May 6th, we'll get the Reverie, which is a new event. And this is free to all players. So that's the roadmap going forward with the season of the Drifter. So moving on with the TWAB and we see states prime accessibility and this talks about colorblind mode because obviously if you didn't know uh, with Gambit Prime there will be select roles uh, with each role you'll get a certain armor each armor is represented by a certain color so basically the four roles are Reaper, Invader, Collector and Sentry the Reaper is the person who kills all the combatants. The Invader is the person who invades and kills the other team. The Collector is the guy who collects all the malts. And the Sentry is the guy who takes out the Taken within that Prime Evil battle. And we can see what these four colours for these four represented armours will look like within colour blind modes on screen now. Now also with uh, the Joker's World we will get new pinnacle weapons. Uh, there's three in total. There's a Vanguard one called Oxygen SR3, which is a precision scout rifle, which will offer that solar burn. And the Oxygen's unique perk, uh, Dragonfly deals more damage based on the number of precision hits made or beforehand, which sounds pretty cool. For the Crucible, we get the Recluse, a lightweight machine gun, and it's void. This thing's unique perk is called Master of Arms, kills with any weapon, improves this weapon's damage for a short time. And then there is a Gambit one, which is called uh, Delirium, I believe that's pronounced. Rapid fire machine gun, and this will offer arc. The Delirium's unique perk is called Killing Tally. Kills increase the weapon's damage until it is stowed or reloaded. Damn, that sounds pretty cool. With their reintroduction of bullet hole style machine guns, we figured that a perk that uh, played with uh, large magazine sizes and deal with waves of enemies would uh, be appropriate. Unlike the other two weapons, this one has one of the new weapon perks we're introducing in Season of the Drifter, Overflow, to kick the magazine size out even further for true spray and play action. 
While we're on the subject of weapons, here's another preview of some changes made for the season of the Drifter. Exotic power weapons in Destiny have been the go-to for quite some time, due to getting the most bang for your buck from raw damage. These changes, along with others that will be shown when the full patch notes for 2.2.0 are revealed, are intended to make legendary power weapons a good option for those who enjoy their exotic kinetic and energy weapons. We believe that the exotic you choose to run should be an expression of your playstyle rather than just the math working out in your favour. Exotics will always have their unique properties, but a well rolled or legendary power weapon should be able to compete in raw damage with an exotic power weapon. Although the legendary weapon may need conditional setups and mods to outright match, nonetheless the gap should not be so wide that you the player feel it necessary to run an exotic in any specific slot. Grenade launchers, PvE damage increased by 25%, reserve ammo increased on all grenade launchers, in most cases grenade launchers gain 3 rounds in reserves, but this amount may vary based on the perks you have, field prep etc. Magazine perks and mods no longer affect ammo reserves. Grenade launchers have a bit of a reserve issue due to the magazine having an impact on reserves, and as a result, the reserve totally widely changed. Typically not in the favour of the player, this was addressed, and they get a PvE damage bonus on top of it too to make them more competitive in that slot. Rocket launchers. PvE damage increased by 60 to 65%. Exotic rocket launchers have had their damage tuned separately. Cluster bomb. Damage reduced by 80%? Like what? This lost damage was moved to the rocket launcher's main projectile and noted above in its damage increase. Okay then, I get that. Rocket launchers were entirely too dependent on cluster bomb to be effective. Like the full auto perk on shotguns, cluster bombs would nearly double the damage output of any given rocket under optimal conditions. The result was that on any target that you couldn't get all the cluster bombs to impact and detonate, rocket launchers fell by the wayside pretty harshly. By moving most of the damage of cluster bombs into the rocket itself, rocket launchers will now be more reliable and more effective all around, especially against aerial targets that cluster bombs would almost never damage. Okay, so a few changes to weapons there, nothing major to be honest. I just wonder how that grenade launcher change is going to affect them in PvP. I mean, I know the PvE damage is increased by 25%, but I'm guessing the increased reserved ammo is counting for both PvE and PvP. They weren't really clear on that, to be honest. Okay, so we're going to move on to Eververse with a seasonal update. With each season, we have an opportunity to update our goals surrounding Eververse and the ways players engage with it. In Season of the Drifter, we've put more focus on giving players control in the ways they acquire the items they wish to equip. The following is from the dev team. Last year, we talked about our efforts to give you more control over how you purchase Eververse items. We released the Prismatic Matrix as an experiment to partially address this, but we believe we can do it even better. For Season of the Drifter, we want to try something new. We will be removing the Prismatic Matrix instead every week. There will be unique bundles available that can be directly purchased for silver allowing you to directly buy exactly the items you want. All unique bundles will also contain an exclusive vanity item available only through that weekly bundle. If you currently have any prismatic face sets, you can still use them up until March 5th. After the beginning of the new season, they will turn into expired prismatic face sets and will dismantle into 150 bright dust. Bright dust storefront will also continue to offer a direct path to acquiring items found within bright engrams. As always, we will continue to monitor feedback and work to improve the Eververse experience each season. And when we are ready to try something new, we will share those plans directly with you. For now, here are a few items you can expect to see in next season's bright engrams. And we see some dude eating chicken. We see a new armor set and a new, I believe, ornament for the Malfeasance, which looks pretty cool. And a few other bits and bobs right there. Now, I've seen a lot of uh, feedback on this already about them removing the Prismatic Matrix and giving us the option to actually buy direct uh, items from Eververse with our money, basically, because that's what Silver is. You have to purchase Silver in game for real life money. Now, this is an actual thing I think is a good choice. If they're giving us options to actually buy what we want instead of getting things at random, because that's how it was before, people, you would purchase Silver and you would just buy Engrams, and what you got from the Engrams was completely random. They are giving us the opportunity to buy what we want for our money. There's no wasting your money now. There's no RNG. There's no gambling. And this, in my opinion, is a great, great thing. I mean, a lot of people will not agree with that. A lot of people think this should be just taken out of the game altogether. There should be no loot boxes whatsoever. I mean, I understand that point too. But at the end of the day, people, for them to continue maintenance on the game going forward, bringing us all this new shit, they need to make their money somehow. 
and giving us direct options to purchase what we want from Eververse is a good thing in my opinion like I said there's no more gambling anymore there's no more purchasing silver buying these engrams and not getting anything you want I mean you can probably still do that but now each week there will be bundles which offer exclusive things also which you can purchase direct for silver that real life money money and I think this is a step in the right direction if you ask me I mean yes a happier world would be no eververse no loot boxes at all but at the end of the day people they are a part of games now they ain't going anywhere no matter how much we bitch and complain about them this in my opinion is just a better system than what we had before and it's as simple as that now the twab just goes on to talk about fixes and bugs and all sorts of things coming within the next update 2.2.0 which will be resolving a number of issues we've been having which you guys can see on screen now if you do want to check them out but me i just want to recap on why i believe the season of the drifter could be exciting times to going forward they really could now after the v-doc i like i said i wasn't too optimistic about it i mean it looked okay but i wasn't sure how long content was going to last and let's face it people there are other games out there to play there's apex legends there's anthem for any of you are playing that uh, the division is not far away either and there's many other games people are playing but what we see the roadmap offering with the season of the drift it looks quite promising and it seems as though they are dropping content more or less every single week for the next month or two leading up into the reverie uh, event whatever this is so although this isn't a massive dlc this isn't a taken king this isn't a forsaken it seems as though at least we will get steady content coming over the coming months and this flow of content this is what destiny truly needs right now because at the minute let's not be around the bush people it's pretty damn boring there's nothing to do whatsoever but as long as they get the rewards right as long as they get the end game right it could be quite good i mean it's always exciting times for a destiny player when new dlc is about to drop but until it drops people we don't truly know how it's gonna be I mean everybody looked forward to the black armory and it was good for the first couple of weeks maybe even first month but then it just died down relatively quickly the roadmap right here in my opinion is about 100 levels higher than what we got with the black armory roadmap but still again we won't know until we actually get our hands on it but with them introducing these all new armor sets a new game mode in the reckoning a new game mode in gambit prime it could be quite exciting times ahead it really could the one thing i still do have an issue with though is a, the announcement of none new exotic armors no new faction rallies no word on factions at all to be honest no new crucible or vanguard weapons beside their pinnacle ones and only two new exotics one of them i believe tied to uh basically season pass holders but hey there is more to a game than just chasing exotics i mean they are a massive thing for many many people but as long as there is loot to chase and reasons for us to continue to play then it should be quite good the gambit prime armors in my opinion look quite interesting i'm guessing the way these will be unlocked is you have to play a certain role for a certain period to get these if you want to get the collector armor set you will have to collect a certain amount of malts no doubt and then push forward into the reckoning game mode and do something there and like i said if they get this right people it could be that grind we all love but we will see we will see but guys let me know what you think about the season of the drifter are you excited to come back to destiny did you never leave destiny let me know down below in that comment section guys i hope you enjoyed the video and hopefully people i will see you on that next one